Hey, it's TDA, and if you like ruling Arrakis with House Carino, this guide is for you. House Carino is one of the harder factions in the game, as you get a heavy authority penalty while expanding away from your main base. That means you will be controlling only a small number of zones. Sure, you get a second main base to offset that somewhat, but it takes a while to get there and it also doesn't come cheap. You do get an additional building slot in your zones, but only having a few zones means that you'll really need to think about how you will be building up those zones that you do have. So let's jump into it. Optimizing your zones is where the strongest counselor really shines. So when CCI allows you to double up on most buildings, which is really strong if done correctly. Keep in mind that you do pay a higher upkeep on buildings that you only have one of, so make sure that you make proper use of this ability or you're actually making the game harder for yourself. More on this later in the guide. In most cases, your second choice of counselor should be Fenring. You want to spend most of your time as House Greeno making yourself an unattractive target to attack, and the second ability really helps with that. His first ability allows you to pick up all discoveries around the map, or at least pick whichever you want to choose, which isn't really super powerful, but the small bonuses do add up over time. The princess has her uses with her ability to cancel negative resolutions, but if your enemies are pushing those on you specifically, you're probably winning the game anyway or this ability is not going to matter. The development investment gives you, both you and your opponent a little boost, but in my opinion it's a little bit unreliable and truces don't last forever anyway. In the last place we have the Captain, which makes your military cheaper but worse. His abilities simply don't really match with the overall strategy of House Carino, so in short, pick someone else. At the start of the game, send your Ornithopter to explore the village in the nearest spice field, build two melee units and build another Ornithopter. Send the units that you built to the village as soon as they are ready, so you don't waste any time. When fighting, always make sure that you focus fire on the individual enemy units and once you have your first village, get a refinery up and running and make sure you put your harvester on auto recall and crew it right away. I personally also like building a third ornithopter to attach it to this harvester right away, but you can also use one of your existing flyers on this. That's up to you. Meanwhile, your ornithopters need to explore the zones that are adjacent to your main base. Focus on finding out what types of zones there are around first, and don't bother exploring the villages until you are either about to take control, or already have a good overview of what is around you. Ideally, you're looking for Plascrete first, but Rare Elements is a very good second option as well. In terms of technology, I recommend going for Megalopolis first for the flat 20% boost to everything, and then solid materials to make sure you get the most out of the cost reduction. Third, advanced engineering, because you are going to make use of all the building slots in every village anyway, and the spice silences are going to be very useful for those very few spice fields that you'll actually control. This opening order of research will help you jumpstart your economy. Right after you take your first zone, you should be ready to take your second one as well. If you have a Plascrete zone nearby, that is usually an easy pick. If you chose the correct counselors, you can put two Plascrete factories in such a zone, which means they will both benefit from the bonus and that you will avoid paying the increased upkeep. This will give you a ridiculous Plascrete income, allowing you to build whatever you need. If you get unlucky and don't have Plascrete nearby, take a look at the village bonuses. Any zone that will give you a significant bonus to Plascrete, manpower or knowledge production is a good backup option. Rare elements can also be very worthwhile to focus on, especially if you intend to go for a hegemony victory. So while you're expanding, you'll want a wind trap in the zone with the highest wind strength, a spice silo near your refinery, two recruitment offices that should be in the same village, and I recommend building two research hubs in a single village as well. Basically, whenever you build one of a building somewhere, you are probably going to want to build a second version of that building there too, just to make sure you're not paying more upkeep than you need while maximizing your production. As an example, here are my first three zones in a recent playthrough. I have two Plascrete factories in this zone, both getting the buff, and three research hub hubs, each getting a double bonus from the village trade. And all of those buildings are getting the Imperial Administration buff as well. Similarly, down here I have a village set up with two processing plants because of the rare elements, two craft workshops for the same reason, and two wind traps. Why did I put my wind traps here? Well, I had five wind strings and plascrete bonuses on my economy buildings. 
In this case, that may meant not using the research hub bonus that I also have in this village, but I was already maximizing that elsewhere, so that didn't really matter. This means that it is especially important to make note of the village traits because those might help you determine which buildings should go in which village. Another thing to keep in mind is that you will be able to build 6 buildings per village and ideally you want to have 4 of the same color in each. This allows you to make the most out of the technology Imperial Administration, which not only will get you a 10% bonus to everything if you have those four buildings of the same color, but it will also provide your nearest villages with double village traits. Optimizing your zones like this is what will make or break your House Carino gameplay, and because every game will look different, it will take some practice to get it right. So apologies for the deep dive here, but this is really vital for your strategy. Keep expanding as you can while not neglecting your military. Try to pillage as much as you can in the zones around you so that you know you will not be taking because pillaging gives you a hefty amount of solari. Also, don't forget to like this video if you liked it so far because it helps others find this content as well. Put your first two advices on a rocket's infiltration for the authority as well as the ability to scan discoveries as always and after that start focusing on whichever resource you are lacking the most. From this point on, you'll need to start focusing on your end game strategy. The lack of ability to easily capture zones makes it hard to go for a military victory. And although Carino does get some decent spying options, it's not really where they shine. I recommend going for a hegemony or shares a win. Both of those will benefit a lot from having zones with rare elements and being able to double up on processing plants as well as crafts workshops in each of those zones makes for a very potent strategy. In both cases the strategy comes down to optimizing the zones that you have for maximum production while pillaging the other zones and in general making sure that you defend your zones against the others. You should try to grab a second spice zone while you can but it's not as high as a priority as it is with the other factions. For research, that means the economy and statecraft is where you want to focus your efforts, although probably after you pick up imperial administration. Picking up spying logistics and outrageous wealth makes it a lot easier for you to defend yourself and gives you access to the extremely powerful emperor monument, while imperial taxes will make sure the spice and solari keeps flowing in. Everything else after that is a little bit more situational and in most cases just icing on the cake. When you get access to your main base buildings, it is important to realize that your special Carino building, the Emperor Monument that I mentioned before, is the one that will double any bonuses you get in that headquarters. This is insanely strong, so optimize it accordingly. In this example, I have built in a single slot district to activate it very early and get a 60% discount on statescraft research and later on get the dividend bonus doubled as well. Keep in mind that you'll have two headquarters soon, but you can only build each building once. That means you can only get a level 3 bonus for a single type of color once, but you can get the level 2 and level 1 bonuses twice if that's what you want. Speaking of your second headquarters, that should in most cases go into a zone two or three steps away from your starting position and specifically in a zone that you did not want to develop as it will replace the village that was already there. This second base also means you can double up on your adjacency bonuses as well as reduce the distance to a handful of interesting zones significantly, making it a lot cheaper to expand there. It makes defense a lot easier as well as the base serves as another airfield. Once you have about 6 or 7 production zones, you should just prioritize on optimizing what you have as you will probably not be able to expand much further than that. Don't forget at this point that you have the Propaganda Office that gives a massive boost to production on top of all the other bonuses that we already discussed. But the authority cost that it asks for is pretty hefty, so don't use this until you're pretty much done expanding anyway. In terms of military, a good mix of units should suffice for a solid defense. The Saudikar especially are very strong, just don't forget that you'll also need units that can hold off the enemy air force. Speaking of Air Force, the Hammer is a very bad unit. It is basically an expensive flying artillery drone, uh, but without really any upside. The large Kronos on the other hand is pretty decent, so don't feel bad about building this monster of a unit. 
All in all, this is a pretty defensive game style that is mostly about optimizing your economy. It shouldn't surprise anyone that I consider this to be a very cool approach, but I can see why it might not appeal to everyone, especially since it is not that easy to pull off. However, if done right, you should have the best economy of everyone on the planet, but you don't have many options to intervene with what others are doing. However, time is on your side, so generally you should be able to win an economic victory a lot faster than the others can do their thing. You'll just need to make sure that you don't get overrun before that happens. I hope you found this guide useful, and make sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Subscribe for more, and I hope to catch you in the next one.